like they ate. Before you left Australia, there was a demonstration against you at Queen's University, and there have been demonstrations at the University of Toronto. Who are the people you're upsetting and why do they want to shut you down? I'm upsetting radical leftists because I don't approve of them. I don't like the resentment, I don't like the ideological pre-conviction, I don't like the emphasis on equity or diversity or inclusivity or all of these buzzwords, I don't like the damage they've done the universities, I don't like the spillover of that into broader society, I don't like the totalitarian presuppositions, I don't like the history of radical leftist murderousness, I don't like the failure of academics to take a responsibility for the role they played in facilitating that through the 20th century, and I don't like the ongoing demolition of the universities. That's why they come out in droves to protest me, even though they never do it on the basis of the arguments that I'm actually making. It's always name-calling and noise and derision and insults and pounding and juvenile behavior that they're punished quite badly for in the court of public opinion. So if you're going to stand up for something, stand up for your truth. It'll, it'll shape you. You cannot negotiate unless you can say no. Be afraid, but be afraid of the right thing. And the right thing you should be afraid of is not saying what you say, because that's the same as not being. Given that you applaud people standing up for themselves, surely then you must applaud the suffragettes who got out into the streets to demonstrate for the rights of women to vote. Rosa Parks for refusing to give up her seat on the bus, and Harvey Milk for getting out there in the streets of San Francisco in the 1960s to demonstrate for gay rights. Well, I would certainly, with Rosa Parks is the one I would pull out of that in particular. It's like, yeah, that took a, that's exactly the sort of thing that I take, think is unbelievably courageous. She put herself on the line, right? She didn't put anybody else on the line. She took responsibility for her decision. The suffragettes, more complex because there's political activism involved in that, but I would say warranted. You know, I mean, it, it seems perfectly reasonable that as our societies became capable of managing it, that the, the legal status of men and women was equalized. I think it took a tremendous amount of economic development before that was a possibility. I think that's not something we don't consider. I'm not sure that you could move towards equality of representation in law in a society where everyone is, is struggling hand to mouth constantly. Civil rights movement in the 1960s, well, there were, there were problems that needed to be dealt with and, and, and fair enough. Uh, I don't know enough about the situation in San Francisco to make the same comments and I'm just not, cog you know, I'm not informed enough about the situation there to, to say anything particularly intelligent about it. Right, so you've, you're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men, I said it was a bad long-term solution. Okay, you said it was it's making the them miserable. Thing. Yes, it is. The interview you did with Channel 4's Kathy Newman helped propel you to fame. What was it about that interview that made 2.4 million people watch it? Hmm, it's 8 million people. And that doesn't count the, the analysis of it, like lots of people have cut the video up and analyzed it, so the total views are easily 30 million. It was a strange sort of surreal performance. Uh, it was a, the interviewer had um, an ideological and career-oriented, uh, what would you say, a priori position. The fact that it was me that was, she was interviewing was almost irrelevant. She was inventing all of my opinions. She was having a battle with a figment of her imagination. And she kept, I kept pointing that out. I would say something and she would rephrase it in a way that bore very little relationship to what I was actually saying. I mean, it was palpable. You know, and, and I just pointed that out. It's like, that's not what I said. It's not what I meant. And she, she did that so many times that it became like a form of, of Dali-esque surreal performance art. And, and she broke at one point, because and, and, I, I caught her out on a claim she made that was palpably absurd, which, you know, she, she challenged my right to offend people with my free speech. But I you're exercising you see... your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean. Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to... What do you think are the things that people, and I'm especially thinking of your opponents, get wrong about you? Their basic proposition is that, you know, first of all, that I'm a right winger of some sort, and that's just not the case. Um, the second is, is that, 
I'm in the, uh, I hold arbitrary prejudices of reprehensible types, and you know those are whatever the flavor of the day is. I, apparently, I hold all of them, you know, which is palpably absurd. There, there, there's no attempt really to contend with the issues that I'm raising. It's, it's all vilification, and that's because they can't contend with the issues that I'm raising.